Well, we're back with George Benson here at the Breeze and Lounge, and now we're going to talk about picking with your thumb. And George, you know, there's, there have been other players that use their thumb. Wes Montgomery, of course, comes to mind, and uh, Rodney Jones uses his thumb quite a bit, quite well. That's right. He's a wonderful fellow, too. Yeah. Oh, he is. Mm -hmm. We've talked a few times. That's a new thought, actually, in the music world. The thumb thing came along, in, uh, of course, since Montgomery, and uh, there's no... There's not been anyone that really dominated that. No. But it did create interest in that style of technique. Sure. And uh, there are a lot of good players who play with their thumb now, and Rodney certainly is one of them. Sure. And they all have a unique sound because of it, too. That's yeah, true. You know, now mm -hmm. earlier you were explaining to me the angle of your thumb, the angle of your wrist, that would be the difference between your style from Wes's. That's and right. uh, yeah, that plays a big part, of too, of course. Uh, Want to give us just a general idea of what your approach is when you're, when you're playing with your thumb? Well, you know, once I was comfortable with what I was doing and found out I could move around pretty freely with, you know, I can play. a slow idea of how the, you can master up and down strokes because I didn't think about it for a while and I mm -hmm. found it a little difficulty when I started playing the upstroke I always had a little lip on it you know yeah right you got to watch how you keep your, your nails cut here right but it's So it looks to me like most of the power is coming from right here. Is that right? That's true. This is the doing all the work, basically. Okay. It's not like with the pick where I use my whole wrist as the rhythm mm -hmm. factor. And as a matter of fact, when I play chords... you're sort of hanging on to your pick guard a little bit too? Yeah, sometimes okay. that's, a, that's good for getting the feel of the, the whole neck, you know, and for rhythm purposes, you need a uh, some kind of um, a pivot point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I use that sometime, and Wes used it all the time. He either grabbed the whole bottom of the guitar and did like this perpendicular. Like, okay, right. Which is where he got that beautiful tone. See, that gives it a nice, it's nice soft sound. Right, right. But in the wor day's world, they play everything hard. Uh -huh, uh -huh. When you're playing a great Grover Washington tune, <laughs> you better have some muscle on top yeah, of that Yeah, definitely. Stuff, you know? And even the kind of things we play with Lou Donaldson, the thing that you and I played earlier, if you played it with the thumb, uh, play some more of that B-flat thing that we were doing. You know? Okay. And we'll play it a little bit slower this time, the B-flat funk thing. Mm -hmm. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> idea yeah, of what you can do yeah. with that. You can actually, you feel more of the instrument when you play with your thumb. You know, it's a little sure. more sure than the pick. Right. Pick is all over the place. Sometimes it moves this way, and then it, you know, you lose track. If you don't have the right pressure on it, it flaps too much. Right, right. And then you always depend on the, the way the pick is made, you know, the plastic and so forth and so on. But the thumb is a lot more sure. Right, And right. you can do ballads so much better, you know. more of uh, you know emotion to it you know sure, sure. you know that that kind of thing now you, you said you keep your nail out of the way okay so you're not using any nail at all okay you're using pretty beefy strings there and yet you have no callus on your thumb never had a callus ever on any of my fingers <laughs> never had it. My, my my hands are pretty and everybody asked me that question they yeah. even feel them 
Sure, sure. A lot of my friends feel my fingers, you know, because, uh, you know, it's highly unusual. Well, you're digging in so hard with your thumb. I, I just can't believe you're not getting, like, ripped to shreds. I got yeah. that way because I, I started playing, practicing on, uh, I do all my practicing on uh, acoustic guitars, you know, like oh, semi-classical. Oh, really? Okay, and tell me about that a little yeah, bit. And that's, yeah, that, I have yeah. to hit it a little harder okay. to make things happen, to make it sound like a jazz guitar. And I didn't realize I was doing that for a while. I was, I was trying to make it sound like a jazz guitar. And steel strings. Right, right. Classical strings are very, you know, soft sounding, you know. Right. And they're meant to be played nails for a very sensitive feeling. But sure. I've never been able to play that way. I tried, believe yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up playing to get the accent that I wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a whole different thing, sure, uh, sure, technique. Sure. <laughs> That's something new I've been working on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, oh, well, let, let's pick that apart a little bit. Let's, <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> this is a, it's a device. Okay. And All guitar right. players know what that is. Yeah. So you're going that. Okay. That. Okay, so it's like triplets. You're playing mm -hmm. like triplets. Okay, okay. But it's. Okay, all right, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> that is very cool. The thumb is so much sure yeah, yeah. in the pick that I'm becoming uh, more and more comfortable with it. So. Actually, half of my recordings are made with the thumb. A lot of people don't know that, but most, you know, uh, at least uh -huh. half of my recordings. I, are made I, I would thumb. think so. Listening, I can tell well, the difference. Yeah, you're in an tone, instrument. But you're an instrumentalist from way back. You know the <laughs> difference. Okay. Well, look, okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask you too. There's a couple more things actually. Uh, but one is, I, if I'm not looking, I can't hear the difference between your upstrokes and your downstrokes. Now, with a pick, that's easier to attain. Okay, but with your thumb. What tips do you have for that to make your to uh, Montgomery your used to use? Uh, he did a, a lot of uh, hammering. I mean, he played like maybe seventy-five percent or maybe more mm -hmm. of downstrokes, and he hammered the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that kind of thing. You know, I, not exactly that, but for something. Similar. Yes, I understand. But I found that when I play. I play a lot more notes than Montgomery used to play. He, yes. he was a simple player, I mean, right. but that did not limit his ability. <laughs> they were all the right notes. He played the crap <laughs> out of the guitar. You know? Sure, sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Evening up your upstrokes and your downstrokes, or does it, it just it come? It came out? after you play a lot. Okay. Uh, it just uh, it starts coming, but I noticed that. See this side thumb thing I'm doing, as opposed to Montgomery's, uh, you know, straight up and down, which had the beautiful sound mm -hmm. and everything. He had the sound, and he was a great picker. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I gave up that wonderful sound to have a little more flexibility. I see. So by playing this, I can almost play everything I can play with a pick, almost, not quite. Uh, that was my next question. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, and I always know where this is. With a pick, that's a little difficult. Yes, yes, right. I can hit that, that's you right. know. You know, I can do that with this because I'm sure with this I can feel the notes before I hit them. Sure, right. So that's one of the advantages of playing with the thumb. That, yeah. That's amazing. Now, now, did you have to start out slower? I mean, did you? Yes, yeah. we did. <clears throat> I started thinking about what I was playing and, and seeing the, the relationships. I said, now I'm thinking flat five, but do I really have to worry about that? The 
flat five really, if I relate it to major, then it's... Dominant seven being an E flat major chord. Yeah. Now I don't have to worry about the flat five no right. more. I just play D flat major. <laughs> you know? Well, there. And then we go to the uh, the C nine chord. Go back to the jump, uh, the G dominant seven with the flat five. Okay, well, this is uh, this is good. Uh, we have a lot of lessons coming up. We're going to be <laughs> really putting you to the fire on that that kind well, of stuff. That's a lot of you fun, know. though, isn't it, man? Yeah, it really is. It's the like best. Um, I one real quick question here about going back to the pick for a minute. Yes. When you're picking with the pick. Is your power coming from your elbow, your wrist, your fingers? What I think it's think? a combination, but the wrist is doing most of the work. But here's the thing, uh, your finite is in the fingers. Because this is rhythm, but this is picking out the, the particulars. Yeah, in. yeah. So it's a combination there. If I can get my pick back, let me see. And you see how weird my, my, my right hand is. Right. See what happened when I miss you hear that little Yeah, sure. But I'm sure. still in rhythm. Yes. I may fluff the note. <laughs> but rhythm wise Hey, that's king. I'm still there. <laughs> okay, well that's that's great. Now uh, uh, I think we've answered most of the questions most of the people want to know about your picking. It's the number one question people have when I talk to them. So hope you got your answers and we'll be back with more lessons coming up. Mm -hmm.